everyone. I just want to say, my brother's my brother's situation has nothing to do with just this jail. It's every jail. In these conditions, this is Black History Month, and every one of these brothers and sisters in here is our brothers and sisters. The elected officials that came here today, we're grateful for their help, but we let's be honest, we got them here because of their cries and us are listening to them. We're the ones on the street that came here 24-7 for these people, making the calls for them here. And for them to for them to act act as though one more day is we're gonna wait tomorrow we're gonna wait till the next day we got mothers in here that got maced earlier we got kids in here that got maced earlier we were yesterday threatened by the nypd so when we when we're talking about getting um, um respect for them and their human rights for them in there we also got to realize this is not the only jail we're the yes. people on the streets that's also being detained by while, while we're while we're suffering with them they're suffering doing nothing they're not getting, they're, the, the contractors that came here were absolutely not helpful. Their contractors, these are civil servants in here that weren't doing their job even speaking to us. Yes. We had to fight for that. Yes. So this is something that we're all suffering through, but they get to walk away after they say their speech. Woo. I'm not feeling that. No. Uh, basically, my name is Ms. Roberts, and I have a son in here. I don't know what's going on with my child, my child is human. Yes. I gave birth to a human being. I would say, if there were animals in there, they would find a way to go in there and remove every animal from in there. They would make sure that the animal was warm. They would make sure that the animal was fed. They would make sure that everything was taken care of, of that animal. So, I want to know on the question I have to ask every human being out here, are they human? Yes, sir. So since they are human, it's not good to just come and make a speech. They are freezing. They are freezing. We go home. I stayed out here last night. A lot of these officials went home to their beds. But these young men, fathers, husbands, they didn't have no choice. They have to deal with this. And we want to know about getting something done now. Me and the Notification Gang would like to invite everybody to come join us Monday through Thursday, 9.20 to 10 o'clock for Morning Coffee, where we discuss the events of the prior day and also just talk mess about stuff. See you then. Hey, don't forget to check out the link of the day in the description. Oh, Black Dynamite, I wish it was that simple, but this is much bigger than you and me. Hey, little mama, it may be bigger than you, and it may be bigger than me, but it ain't bigger than you and me. Can you dig it? These prisons, we are authorized to go into prisons, to talk to the prisoners, to see how they're being treated, to see the conditions of the prisons, because what happens is you have a kangaroo court in which they're governing themselves. They send people, their friends in there, say everything is good, they just sign the paper, they don't care what's going on, they're not invested in the prisoner's safety, they're not oh, invested in the well being, they don't care if they get medicine, they don't care if they get visits, they don't care if they, the trauma they deal with, they have no allegiance to, to, to the people who are, are being detained. So what we have to do is what I really believe is after this, we have to create a task force. This is, there has to be an organization that is designed. People who, who understand, who are connected, who may have been formerly incarcerated, who know what to look for, who know what to identify what's wrong, who are able, not able to be, you just pull a wool over their eyes because they don't know any difference. I think that we have to make sure that we create that type of task force to make sure that things like this stop happening. I can just so, myself, I'm just removed from doing 10 years of federal prison. I still walk around with my federal ID to keep me reminded to be made humble. After 10 years, I was sentenced to a 20-year sentence based on false accusations. I filed my own appeals. I won my appeal. I'm home. I did 10 years ultimately. I've been out two years now, and since I've been out, I've been doing things for the community, doing give backs, trying to be a part of everything that has to do with giving back to any community, any type of thing going on like this. I'm a part of it. Why? Because I know firsthand what's going on. I was in there. I sat in that hole, you know, six months at a time, 
I, I've been shipped around for uh, what they call um, diesel treatment. When they, when they feel I'm not cooperating, they send you all around the world, put you on a plane, send you to this facility, send you to that facility. But you never land there for too long. You're constantly being moved. It's called diesel treatment. You know? Uh, pardon me, my son. May I ask a question, please? The thing that you just spoke about is some kind of federal oversight in the prison system that you think that they should put in place yes. in order to prevent any type of malfeasance like that's going on currently. Yes. Do you have any people that you think would be a good idea to actually um, headline or, 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 or to push this particular agenda or will be good on the board? Well, I know, I know, I, w I would definitely be willing. A lot of people that I work with, such as Tamika Mallory, my brother Angelo, who, who specifies in this work knows what to do, who is alive, who's been working on the front lines of people, and, and, and some other people that I'm sure that we can put together a, a definite cabinet of people who are invested in the safety and well-being of these prisoners, and just in justice, period, to make sure that these people will be treated right, and that these facilities are up to par, and that they're treated, they, they are, are able to livably house individuals, not just put people in a warehouse and make money on them that the conditions are livable, they are humane living conditions. And I'm sure we can put together some type of task force and some type of organization that can make sure that's done. One other question. Do y'all have any plans if the generators and the, the, uh, the common needs that the, that the, uh, deten the detainees are supposed to have isn't available by tomorrow. Are there any plans? Are there anybody that y'all plan on speaking with? Is there any uh, politicians that y'all plan on calling? And is there any politician that you feel have been doing a good job as far as trying to get assistance here currently? Well, um, we've been we've been in contact with every political person we can, every politician. But um, I, I would have to say that my brother Jamani Williams has been the most vocal and been the most present of all of the politicians. They have a lot of brothers have been here. Michael Blake is here. You've seen um, Tis James just came here. Um, Stringer just came here, the controller. So there's, there's definitely been um, a, a, um, outcry in public. A lot of politicians have come on behalf to see what's going on. But I, I think there has to be more of an effort to, to demand something at least. Not to come and look and somebody tell you it's being done. No, it's not being done. There's no way that for eight days that there should be no electricity in one building. That is, that is especially a building with high security. With security risk, there's no electricity and no heat. It makes no sense. And that just means that somebody is sleeping at the wheel and, and they don't value the lives of the people in this building. And that, that, this, this is a civil rights issue. This is a civil rights crime, you know, so. I think all of these politicians, our, our president should be issued a state of emergency right now. There's no way, there is no way in the world if I... All right, I got another question, my brother. Um, so tomorrow, if, if they're not able to do what they're supposed to do, what is the next step? Well, the next step is pretty much is we got to keep the pressure on. We got to do more demanding. We gotta. We maybe the crowd has to get bigger. Whatever it is, only thing that we can do is elevate the voices. We can highlight what's going on. Anything else, we can't win. We can't initiate any level of violence. We have to. We have to utilize our voices. We gotta utilize our votes. We gotta look at the politicians in office right now who are allowing this to happen and make sure that they get out of office. We gotta put people in office that you know have our best interests in hand. So we gotta utilize our voice and our platform. That's the best we can do. Utilize our voice and our platform and make sure that the people who are directly impacted are the ones who are telling the story and continue to tell that story until they can't ignore it. One last question. Okay, so from what I hear, there was some uh, blankets and whatnot that the the mayor was trying to give to the facility and they denied it. Is there is that reason that they should that they should remove the warden? I mean the warden should be removed because this is his watch. And, it, and, and if you have electrical problems and prisoners not getting heat for eight days, then you failed your job. You're not comp you are not competent to do the job. If, if you if, if this is not if you leave your job and you go home while this is going on understanding that we're in a deep crisis, and you go home and you're watching the Super Bowl while we out here with people
people are in sales and no show sales, and these are under your watch, then you are not capable of doing the job. So I don't think there's one issue why this water should be by I think there's been problems with this facility for years, and a lot of people I know have been calling out these problems. So I think this is just compounded. This is the icing on the cake, and these people need to be removed. And he's not the only one. But there's a lot of people in place, in power, that don't deserve the power because they haven't done anything to show that they are, you know, capable of maintaining that power. Thank you very much, my son. Appreciate your assistance. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. If you would like to help dictate the direction that this channel takes, please leave a comment. All comments are appreciated, whether positive or negative. Thank you very much and enjoy your day. And remember... Positive thoughts cause for positive things to happen. Let's get it.